And welcome to the Bearcat Sports Network brought to you by Pinnacle Bank for District Basketball here today in Kearney, Nebraska. We have the Kearney High Bearcats versus the Gretna Dragons. Bearcats kind of had a little bit, got off to a hot start at the beginning of the year, kind of cooled down a little bit and had a little bit of a rocky end to the year. Gretna Dragons are led by led by head coach who is in the Basketball Hall of Fame right now in the Nebraska <laughs> State Basketball yes. Hall of Fame there, yeah. Um, yeah, one thing to mention that with that uh, with that rocky end to it, Kearney's had a very tough schedule this year. They have not. Yes. They've played seven of the eight teams that made it to state last year, and there's they ended off the season at uh, against here Miller North. They were ranked sixth in the state, so they on their own were already really good, and they hung in until the very end of the game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna kick our mics off for the national anthem. You'll have the crowd mic going so you can hear the national anthem, and we will be right back. Was your national anthem? We do not have our Carney High bet, um, pet band today because it is a district game, not a home game for the Bearcats, but it is in a way. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that, <laughs> that I, made no yeah, sense, but like it that. makes sense. All right, we're going to get into starting lineups for the Gretna Dragons. Starting off, we'll have number 10, Sydney Zabuadul. Number 11, Jenna Marshall. Number 20, Grace. Hunt work. Number 34, Emma Swigert. And number 42, Simone Parent. And that is your starting lineup. That is your starting lineup for the Gretna Dragons. And we will have the video playing for have the, video have, the, have the video playing was created by Bearcat Vision as we get ready for the starting lamps for the Carney High Bearcats. Gentlemen, now the starting lineup for your Carney High Bearcats. Starting off of the junior, Tatum Rusher, the leading scorer on this team. And number three, Kennedy Gardner. And the senior and 
Looking to go for some records tonight, Kirsten Gardner. Yes, only two threes away to, from breaking, from tying the Kearney High School three point record. And Maddie Province. And the other senior, one, only two seniors on this Bearcat roster, Kaylee Hatcher. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have our starting lineups. We're ready for tip here in Kearney, Nebraska. Let's play some basketball. Yeah, Kearney certainly hoping to get off on fire. They've been they've been a significantly good team from beyond the arc, as they proved in their Millard North game. As all 21 of their first quarter points came from beyond the arc. Taylor Hatcher. And the Bearcats control the tip. Tatum Rusher. Gretna is going to start out in a 2-3 zone. And the ball is going to be stolen. That's been one of the things that the Bearcats have struggled with these last few weeks. They've struggled with a lot of turnovers. And it's been tough. They've faced, they've faced some different defenses. They've uh, Millard North switched to their 1-3-1 part of the game after, after that first quarter for them. And that's a three-pointer, and that is no good from Huntwork. Bearcats running it down the court. Kirsten Gardner is going to have to Tatum Rusher. Rusher thought about the shot. Picks it up, hands it off to Gardner. Bearcats slowing it down just a little bit. Gardner passes to Province. Back to Gardner. Gardner's going to direct the traffic up top. This is in the province. Province. Passes to Gardner. Gardner back to her sister, Kennedy, and knocks down the triple. Yeah, Carney's gonna need that. They're gonna need to be good from beyond the arc if they want to win, and that'll be a travel there by Gretna. Going to the faults of Sydney Zambulde. Kirsten Gardner will take the ball for the Bearcats. Pass it off to Kennedy. Pressure back over to Gardner. Gardner having trouble getting out of the trap that the Dragons have laid. And Titan Rusher, 4 3, knocks it down. Back to back triples for Carney High. Cardi's doing a good job of seeing those passes where they need to go and getting those assists as both those three-pointers are coming off of assists now. Dragons trying to work their way inside. And that shot is up and good. Shot is good from, that was number 11, Jenna Marshall on the bucket. Kirsten Gardner, and good block right there. Tatum finds Kaylee Hatcher for two inside. And just like that, Bearcats are shooting 100% for their first eight points. Rebound goes to Kennedy Garner there after a rough fall for Gretna. Looked at as if almost Kirsten was able to. And that's a foul. So Kirsten will go to the line to shoot three. Kirsten to shoot three free throws here after that foul from behind on the attempt. And that shot is good. First of three. Good for the Bearcat. Her second one, no good.
Kirsten's knock, final free throw, good. Knocks down two of three right there. And that's gonna be a rebound and a foul. Matt, Maddie Province got the rebound, it was pushed from behind. Foul is gonna be called to number 11, Jenna Marshall, that's her first. Bearcats off to an early lead over the Dragons, 10 to two. Gone off a little bit to a quicker offensive start, Bearcats have, and that's, that's been very beneficial to them getting ahead in a lot of the games. I feel like when they get ahead early, it really does benefit the Bearcats, and usually they go on to win those games. Yeah, and the only missed shot is a missed free throw attempt, so really they've had a great night shooting. Uh, so that's a three-pointer from Kirsten, and that one is no good. Spoke too soon. It's the broadcaster's curse right there. Yeah, you seem to get away with it all the time, but as soon as I try it, no. Lucky you. And the Dragons had good ball movement right there, but that's a missed shot right there and a rebound by Jenna Marshall. Marshall misses that shot. The ball's gonna go out of bounds and it will be Bearcat basketball. Carney struggling a little bit on defense there, missing some, uh, some defensive rebounds and kind of having to recover quickly on defense. Not something that they want to do all too often. Garner will take the ball up for the Bearcats. Off to Rusher in the corner. Into Province, Province dribbles in, puts up the shot and off the glass, no good. <laughs> Little sideline catch right there from from Grace Huntwork, and there's a foul called. Almost could have been been a help on that Gretna championship uh, run there. <laughs> Stop, dude. You know who made that catch? Uh, no, but I know what, <laughs> but I know what happened. <laughs> At the line right now is number 22, Aiden Pullman. And no good on that attempt. Rebounded by Tatum Rusher. Garner to Straka. She just checked into the game for the Bearcats. Tuffle being kind of slowed down right here. And Carney still ahead 10-2. Bearcats are, look like they're trying to get those inside looks. Trying to work the post a little bit. Province tried to pass cross court to Russia, but it'll be intercepted and an intentional foul right there. That's gonna be called on Tatum Rusher. Jenna Marshall with a great defensive heads up play right there. Yeah, and it's one of those things where Carney's got a pass to get out of this two three zone, actually any zone in general. And if they make their passes that obvious, it's going to be real easy for Greta to pick up steals. Dragons having really good ball movement in a lot of possessions. And it pays off right there as a three-pointer from Aiden Pullman goes in. 10-5 Bearcats. Straka for three. Long, no good. Dragons were looking for a quick bucket in transition. The pass is just in front of Brooke Rose. It'll be Bearcat basketball. Garner orchestrating the offense. Passes it over to Rusher. Into Hatcher. Hatcher back over to Gardner. Rusher drives, stops his passes to Hatcher. Dragons doing a good job of closing out on these shots, T taking away a lot of the looks that the Bearcats might be getting. Garner passes to Straka. And that's going to be stolen away. A great defensive effort right there by the Dragons. Allison Marshall on the steal. And wide open, 
And that is good. That's a warm-up jumper for Jenna Marshall, knocking it down. Yeah, some miscommunication on defense. There, it's going to mean a timeout coming up for the Bearcats. Yeah, the Bearcats were played very really well on the defense. On the, on the Bearcats were defended very well. And we're going to take a quick break. You're watching the Bearcats Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Well, oh, my dreams are sweet. Life is about waking up to a brand new dream. We're the local bank that's with you, wherever it leads, because we're more than a bank in Nebraska. We're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank. We're back here at the Bearcats Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Bearcats had a big lead to start off the game. They were up at 1.10 to 2, and due in part to good defense from the Dragons and some miscues from the Bearcats, the, the Dragons have made it a two-point lead. Garner trying to work her way inside. That's the this is the Gardner, and it goes almost goes off her hands. Bearcats have had some troubles. Just they play amazing uh, basketball. They just get themselves in silly turnover situations. Hatcher with another long three right there, and Rusher puts it up and in for two. Tatum Rusher has five points in this ball game. And no shot. There's a foul on the floor. That was going to be called on number 45, Kaylee Hatcher. That is her second. Maddie Province heads over to check in. Just under a minute remaining in the first quarter. And Marshall passes it over, and that's going to be a three pointer and good. A hand in her face does not matter. Sydney Reimer knocks down the triple. And Carney's got to get a response for Sydney Reimer. She's well. On, she's got five points and leads the and leads Gretna scoring. She has the hot hand for these Dragons. And Hayden scoots a quick shot. That's long, no good. And great pass up and no good. It's gonna be stripped away by Hayden Skeen. Skeener's like, give me that ball. Yeah. She, they gave up their position on the inside, let up that offensive rebound, but. Rusher for three, long, no good. That's gonna be no foul call. I thought there was gonna be like a push foul on the loose ball. I thought that Kennedy Gardner got pushed right there. Inbounding the ball for the Dragons will be Marshall. And a Hail Mary is no good from half court. So the Dragons fought back in the second half of this first quarter to make it a one point game going into the second quarter. You're watching the Bearcats Sports Network brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. to the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. The Great and the Dragons have decreased the Bearcat lead to two, as that's a steal right there by Maddie Province. Great job getting in the middle of that pass. 
Province scoops it over to Rusher. Rusher, well defended, but falls right in the hands of Province, who's wide open for the layup. Almost a, almost a mistake from the Bearcats turns into two points. Yeah, Maddie Province, an aggressive player. He's gonna go get those balls. And you kind of saw it there, where she's kind of jumping out to go get those, to intercept those passes. And she's able to recover that type, but at times it will lead to an opportunity where she's too far past the ball and it'll kind of lead to blown coverage. Province has the ball back inside again. And it's gonna be a travel called. And that's the right call right there. She did a little shuffle right there in the paint. Slid a little bit while trying to snake through those defenders. Sabudo takes the ball for the Dragons. Marshall drives in, passes out to Zabudo. And Zabudo, and one! What a finish right there by Zabudo. She'll go to the line to make it a three-point play. That is Kirsten Gardner's first foul. This will give the Dragons an opportunity to tie for the first time. Instead, they will stay behind. Granite has not tied or led since eight minutes to go in the first first quarter. <laughs> to put it quite plainly, I was about to say, like, why don't we just like call ties like at the start of the game as Gardner puts up a three, no good. Like that'd be really interesting to say. <laughs> so I mean, it was technically tied until Carney scored. So I don't know exactly when that was in the game, but that would have been when they scored first. <laughs> I don't know. Sabudo working her way inside. She's going to get the foul again. Yeah, Maddie knew it too. She reached in there. Saw her shake her head about it. Ownership. We love to see that. We, all these, they say like all these NBA players, just like, what? I did not reach in or anything like that. I think it's always important to make your case. Certainly, but. As that is now tied since eight minutes to go. There we are. Sabudo. Knocks down two of two. And that's the first lead of the night for Gretna. Kirsten Gardner with the ball. Pass it over to her sister, Kennedy. Over into Hayden Skeen. Skeen loses the ball. It's gonna, it's gonna be a double dribble called on Hayden Skeen. Seen some really good defense from Gretna. We've said it before, but these Bearcats, if they face a good, de like a really good defensive scheme, like a lot of their offense is taken away, and we've seen that. We've and yeah, and it may be a little bit of a struggle here at the beginning, but I would almost guess that coming out of coming out of half, they definitely have it figured out. If not, then they would be in trouble the rest of the game. Oh, for sure. The moment this defense gets figured out for the uh, for the Bearcats, it will be. No good. It'll be not great news for Gretna. And that's a great cut and a great layup right there for Simone Parent. Yeah, they've had great ball movement and great off ball movement creating that, creating those open looks. And when you're moving off the ball, setting screens, doing all that sort of stuff, leaving leaving it's leaving those players wide open for looks like that. Yeah, so far, in spite of the Bearcats having the lead for the majority of this game, Gretna has just looked like, looked like the more polished basketball team as Hayden Skeen gets the layup inside. Makes it a one-point game. But yeah, the Dragons just look like a more polished basketball team. They've done, had great ball movement, great defense, as you said. and it's a, it's a great steal right there by Kirsten Gardner. Great hustle right there. Subs coming in for the Bearcats, Harley Straka and Kaylee Hatcher. Hatcher does have two fouls, so she'll need to keep it clean the rest of this half to not put her in any trouble later. I was really confused. I thought she just like dropped the ball, but no, swiped out of her hand. So we'll do this again. A little too close. Yep. Chris Huntwork will in Hunt, Huntwork will inbound for the Dragons. So Brutal trying to put a little trying to put a little sauce on Kirsten Gardner right there, trying to shake shake her off. And no good on that layup, but Harley Straka stays with it. Pass down to Tatum, Rusher, Rusher. Lays it up and in for two. 
And a timeout will be called. This one's going to be called by the Gretna Dragons. We'll be right back. You're watching the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. There's no place quite like our middle of everywhere. We're the bank that'll help you celebrate everything it brings. Because we're more than a bank in Nebraska. We're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Back to the Bearcats Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Bearcats have regained the lead after squandering it away early in the second quarter. And that's a quick layup. Grace Huntwork is hitting transition for the easy layup. Yeah, Carney's got to be able to stay quick during their press, uh, during their full court press. Looked like the defense kind of fell asleep right there for a moment. Straka drives in, passes to Hatcher. Hatcher to Gardner. Tatum Rusher for three. No good. Loose ball. Still loose. But it'll be picked up by the Dragons. Rebounded by Parent. <laughs> and no good on that layup. And I apologize for the kind of ch chuckle if y'all heard that. That was just, looked like she. It, looked, it just kind of looked like Grace Huntwork was running circles around. Yeah, no, it, <laughs> and that's what made me laugh. So Huntwork has been was taken the wrong way. Huntwork has been showing off her speed coming oh, yeah. down the court like she's, that. Yeah, she's very quick. She's done a very good job of that. She's done a very good job of just running, just running the defense out the gym, really. Straka with the ball. Passes it over to Hatcher. And Kennedy Gardner puts up the three, no good. Bearcats have seriously cooled off. And stepping out of bounds after the rebound was Jenna Marshall. So it'll be Bearcat basketball. Kaylee Hatcher will inbound for the Bearcats. Just over to Kirsten Gardner. Gardner back to Hatcher. Province hands it off to Kennedy. And Kennedy Gardner will go to the line to shoot two. Fouled on the shot. And called for the foul will be Sydney Reimer. I wonder if there's any relation to Rachel Reimer. Reimers, or wait, is it Reimers? Or I think Reimers? since there's think an extra S, it takes, it is Reimers, so I think since it's the extra S, it'll take away any relation. That would make sense. My bad. <laughs> hey, I, mean, it's a, I, I looked at the roster and I was like, wait a minute, and then I was like, wait a second. That's uh, What if it was a typo? <laughs> it's quite possible. <laughs> which, uh, which one's the Reimer? Reimer is 24. 24. <laughs> Most likely they're, they're not really. They're spelled differently, just yeah. that extra S. Yep, that's uh I mean closely not. That that'd be a serious factor oh. in taking it away and hitting the deck hard with there with Cindy Zaboodle. A lot of contact on that. Kaylee Hatcher. Looks like she's gonna drive it in. Kirsten Gardner cannot get the three to go, but Madison Province with a great Jeez. hustle. Gardner, four three. Oh. Short. Man, I tell you what. We have a decent sized rowdy crowd, honestly, for for this game on Saturday, and I'm I'm pretty sure they would have gone nuts if that happened. Is that was that Rush or Province? I missed it. It was Province. Province? Yeah, that's gonna be a layup. That layup is good by Brooke Rose. Yeah, Carney's had great first quarter starts and then let it let everything kinda come a whole lot closer. Province and Rusher in the corner for three, no good. Rebounded by Kirsten and wide open. Great pass right there. Unselfish basketball right there by Kirsten Gardner. Finding Kaylee Hatcher for the open bucket. 
Hatcher has four points on the night. And that giving the lead back to the Bearcats, but it's been back and forth this entire time. It really has been. Both teams are kind of turned it up a notch. Bearcats are starting to figure out how to feel their way around this Gretna defense. It's been paying off. And there's gonna be a foul called on Tatum Rusher. And that'll be her second foul. That's her second. Substitution coming in for the Bearcats. Hayden Skeen will check in for Kaylee Hatcher. Sabudo will inbound for the Dragons. And well defender right there by Tatum Rusher. Knocking the pass out of bounds. Sabuto will inbound again. This time we'll get it to Allison Marshall. And almost stripped away. Bearcats in their own right kind of turning it up on the defensive end just a little bit. A little bit more stout. And yeah, Carney defensively much better here at, towards this end of the second quarter. Case in point right there is that shot from Aiden Pullman as well defended and no good. Yeah, Skeen was able to stand her ground, not move her feet, so to keep uh, any possibility of a foul happening. And Skeen, golfer, you know, will go out of bounds. Stay with the Bearcats. Carney's got 24 and a half seconds left if they want to play for last shot. A choice we don't see all too often from, from the girls' side. Rusher over to Province in the skein. Skeen. It gets the friendly roll up and in. 4 2. Three point game. And no good on that shot, but there's going to be a charge called. Hayden Skeen drawing the charge. Drawing the charge from Allison Marshall. And that leaves Carney eight and a half seconds left. Plenty of time for Carney to get something done. Garner trying to use her speed to get down court quick. Harley Straka, no good on the three point attempt. But the Bearcats regain the lead. They lead 24 21, heading into the second half. For the halftime, we'll have the Dance Cats performing. We will cut our mics, but we'll leave our crowd mic on. So enjoy the Dance Cats. And we'll be back for the second half here from the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. I'm different, yeah, I'm different, I'm different, yeah, I'm different. 
And welcome back to the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. And Mitchell has first half stats for us, and we'll have a little bit of analysis as to what we saw in the first half and make our predictions for the second half. Yeah, so Rusher is leading off the team with seven points. She's got two fouls, and she's three for six from the field and one for four from beyond the arc. She's got one turnover and three rebounds with two assists. Uh, uh, Kennedy's got five points. She's one for two from the field, one for two from beyond the arc, and two for two at the free throw line. One turnover, one, uh, two rebounds. Um, Kirsten is two points, one foul. She's 0 for 4 from the field, o, uh, all of her shots being three-pointers, and she's 2 for 3 from free throw. She's got three rebounds and four assists. She's certainly fine in the open person. Province has got is 1 for 2 from the field. Skeen's got 4 with 2 for 3. Hatcher's got 4 with 2 for 3. And team shoots 9 for 22 from the field and 2 for 13 from beyond the arc. So not great three-point shooting-wise. Yeah, we're talking about we're talking about um, Kirsten Gardner's three pointer three season single season three point record, and that is certainly within reach. But she's just been ice cold, and she puts up a three right there, and hopefully maybe that was that would be able to change things. But no good on that attempt as well. Dragons with the ball now. Sabudo is going to pass over to Marshall. Marshall. He's going to hand it, Ooh. and it's going to get, a, it's going to be a charge. Another charge picked um, up for Carney. Those have been huge so far. Especially in an instance where that meant points or not. It was number 15, Allison Marshall, who committed the charge. Kennedy Garner. With the ball, passes it over to her sister, Kirsten. Kirsten trying to orchestrate the offense here. Back over to Kirsten. Into Hatcher. And wide open. Wide open is Hatcher. She gets the open layup, and that is good. Yeah, one... One big thing here so far for the Bearcats has been at the end of that uh, second quarter, they started figuring out this 2-3 zone. They've seen their ability to drive in, draw the defenders, and find usually Kaylee Hatcher or Hayden Skeen, sometimes Maddie Province there too. Leads to an easy layup. Those open looks are going to be crucial. Just, yeah, as you said, just spreading out the offense. I mean, spreading out the defense, excuse me. And getting those open looks. And it'll work. Gardner looked like she was going to shoot. Province, I don't know. They're trying to they're trying to find a cutting Kirsten right there, but I think that that was a little bit of a forced pass, almost a little bit. Yeah, those forced passes totally possible. Is there they're there showing up, and it's Carney got lucky that time. Rusher drives in, pass over to Hatcher. Hatcher, no good on that three-point. Gets her own rebound. Back over to Kennedy Gardner. Gardner back to her sister, Kirsten. Yeah, a little too strong on that three-pointer. Luckily, luckily to get that rebound back, but Carney, two for 15 from beyond the arc. Need to start continuing to work inside to get those easy points. It's been a rough day from, inside, from outside the arc. Inside the arc, however, Tatum Rusher knocks down a jumper for two. She has nine points. A bright spot here is Carney has ten assists, so that's real nice for them. Yeah, we love we love to see just we love to see the team just sharing the offense. We've seen very very spread out point totals. We have Kennedy Gardner being the second leading scorer on the team, and no gun on that layup, and that's going to be stripped away by Allison Marshall. Marshall's running down the court. She's going to try to take it coast to coast. And she was fouled, so he, she will go to the line to shoot two. That'll be Maddie Province's second foul. Tell you what, for me having to keep stats one input at a time, that was a nightmare to do that last possession. There's a lot going on right there. And that first one is knocked down for Marshall. Yeah, and that last offensive possession, there were three missed shots, two offensive rebounds, and ultimately ending, ending up with nothing. Marshall knocks down two of two. 
Bearcats lead 28-25, three point lead. Rusher gets the ball and she'll be fouled. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Foul's gonna be called on number 11, Jenna Marshall. That is her second. Rusher's first is no good. A little too strong off the back iron. And yeah, kind of seeing kind of Carney's unfortunate ability to shoot today. Just not quite there. They've been able to keep the lead. Anything past kind of outside that paint there has been really tough. Yeah, it's been yeah. You're 100% right. We've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of shots. It's just been off, like and not even like unfriendly and unlucky roll. It's just been off, and it's really hard to maintain leads and grow leads when you aren't getting those shots to fall. Is that's a three-pointer? No good right there by Grace Huntwork. Ball yeah. goes out of bounds, and it will stay with the Dragons. A block by Province. Hatcher will check out for the Bearcats and Hayden Skeen will check in. And no good. No good on that. Well defended. And this could be a turnover there yeah, after that travel. Yeah, travel called on Jenna Marshall. Yeah, Kearney's got two steals, so really th their defense hasn't been amazing with steal-wise forcing turnover, forcing those types of turnovers, but they've still, Gretna hasn't been turnover free, whether it's an errant pass or a uh, too uh, too strong of a travel stuff like that, but that pass straight through the hands of Skeen well, that's something you have to have. You got to be able to catch the ball. It's been straight through her hands, and that three pointer no good. Unfriendly roll for Jenna Marshall. Ball goes out of bounds off of the dragon. It will be Bearcat basketball. Yeah, it's those things like that where it's like, okay, you've got the opportunity to score there, but you can't have the opportunity to score unless you catch the basketball. Garner passes into Skeen. Skeen redeems herself, gets the bucket. Skeen has six points on the night. Dragons just trying to stay patient, get those good looks. And it's Sabuto with the ball. Hands it up to Marshall. Marshall drives in, and she's going to be fouled right there. Foul's going to be called, I believe, on number three, Kennedy Gardner. 33, Matt, Matty Province. So it was about one jersey number off right there. Must have been a swipe inside. I could have swore he was going to go against Kennedy. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Ball goes in and out, no good on the three free throw attempt from Jenna Marshall. Marshall's second is also no good, so 0 for 2 from the line, and that's going to be an offensive rebound for the Dragons. And the ball is loose. Bearcats have the ball. That's one thing they got to be able to get is those rebounds, those easy rebounds when. No one is there to force it. I mean, all you have to do is put your hands out. You gotta be able to get those rebounds. Right, Tatum Rusher, no good. Rebounded by Hayden Skeen. Skeen is gonna be blocked right there. Great defense right there by Sydney Reimer. And Jenna Marshall thought about the shot, but she's gonna pass it off. Passes it off to Reimer. Marshall over to Reimer, Reimer passes it over and a great move to work her way around her defenders. Simone Parent just took one dribble, just moved to the left and had the open lane right there. A hard, a hard player to defend. She, yeah, she. we've seen her make some pretty good moves in the paint. She's trying to get around defenders and she's gotten some points out of it. And talking with Austin at the at the break, Carney usually makes about six three-pointers, and they have just not been there tonight. They are currently 
Two for 18 from beyond the arc. And that's a three-pointer, and that one is short. No good. Shot by Grace Hunt work. Christian Gardner was trying to get a quick bucket down the floor. The pass will be intercepted. Yeah, there's going to be a timeout called by the Gretna Dragons. We'll take that time as well. You're watching the Bearcat Sports Network brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Well, oh, my dreams are sweet. Life is about waking up to a brand new dream. We're the local bank that's with you, wherever it leads, because we're more than a bank in Nebraska. We're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank. Back to the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. The home of the world's shortest countdowns. Ooh. <laughs> Tasha only giving us one instead of you know, anything extra. I was running the computer earlier. I just, I, I just can't multitask, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, if you noticed a much quieter first quarter, that's because we gave <laughs> Nolan a lot to do. I know. I was like, well, shoot, i got to manage this clock. i got to call a, i got to identify players. Man, this is a lot to do right now. Nolan, has any shoe caught your eye? No, that's nope. been the least of my concerns. It's been really <laughs> white shoes. Yes. We do got a lot of white shoes. And another offensive rebound. We've seen a plethora of offensive rebounds from Gretna in the second half. I like that plethora. It's a great word, man. It is. Do you know what a plethora is? It's a large amount of something no, for it's variety. No, it's a reference to a movie. Well, we didn't get that. Shoot, I so feel like I know it's. Why do I know what this movie is? Princess Bride. Oh, I've seen that. Yes. I don't even remember Never. that part, Bro. though. I've seen that. Princess Bride is one of my favorite movies do ever. Do you know what a plethora is? And there's a foul. It's going to be called on, on uh, <laughs> Kaylee Hatcher. That's her third foul. She needs to be careful. Gets her closer into foul trouble. And I'll tell you what, this has been a really quick game. It has been We're a really quick game. We're just approaching and just uh, like 50 minutes in, and we are less than a minute left in the third quarter. Yeah, our supervisor, Mr. Goff, promised us tacos or pizza, so uh, we're going to eat. you guys. What? <laughs> well, at least. No, that's for the people that get to stay for the second game. Well, at work, I get to eat brisket and a bunch of other good you stuff. You Conference Center are some of the best brisket in town. For real, but I'm facts. honestly tired of it because I have it every time I work there. That's completely understandable. I don't think I, I think I get sick of food after eating it all the time as yeah. that shot no good from Sydney Reimer, rebounded by Kirsten Gardner. Last time I had chicken, and that was pretty good. And Gardner's going to be Whoa. stripped and fouled. And going, <laughs> almost diving into the bench right there is Allison Marshall. Kirsten was without help having to dribble around. Trying to explain to her teammates, come help me next time. Yeah, I was about to say, why isn't anybody coming over further to the timeline just to help Kirsten? As oh. That's going to be a foul called on Allison Marshall. That is her third, so she's got herself in a little bit of foul trouble. Was Coach, um, gosh, what's his name? Was Our, there Coach Fletcher, oh, there Fletcher coach? like Fletcher, like was that intentional to wear green? And that three-pointer is good right there. Kirsten Gardner. Right before the buzzer. Yeah, that's Not a lot. buzzer beater, but still real close. We've seen her hit buckets at the buzzer before. And we're going to take a timeout. We'll be back. She's one away. She's one away. One away away. One what? away from the record. We'll be right back here at the Bearcat Sports Network. Brought to you by Pinnacle Bank.
one. <laughs> and we're back here at the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank for the fourth quarter of this district tournament basketball game. It's the A2 semifinal here. Winner goes on to play the winner of North Star and Fremont. And that's an open shot, and that is no good. Shot was no good from Huntwork. And a great hustle play right there by Tatum Rusher to keep the ball in bounds and keep the clock rolling. And Kirsten Garner too fast. She is too fast for him. She gets that quick bucket in transition. That is li the liveliness that Carney needs. Fletcher telling him, calm down. Let's get let's get this game going. Carney needs to finish out strong, get these rebounds, and get down the floor and score those easy points like that. Grace Huntwork is trying to get a pass off, and it'll go out of bounds. It'll be Bearcat basketball. Be three new players, three players into the game for Grant. I don't know about new, but they will be into the game now. Carney hoping to get, I, I believe, with their largest lead of the game. And that ball goes out of bounds <laughs> in a miscue right there. I could tell by Kirsten Gardner's uh, body language right there. She was like, oh, my goodness. A missed catch off the knee. Hate to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Going to take away some of the momentum Carney had. And that three-pointer is going to be long. Ooh, and two girls hit the deck. Estraka and Marshall as that basket goes down for the Dragons. Carney needs to get themselves in opportunities as that's going to be time out by Fletcher, but Carney needs to get themselves in those opportunities where they can get those rebounds. If not, it's going to lead to second chance points, and Grattan is just going to start chopping away at the lead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take a quick break, and we will be right back here at the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. There's no place quite like our middle of everywhere. We're the bank that will help you celebrate everything it brings. Because we're more than a bank in Nebraska, we're Nebraska in a bank. Pinnacle Bank the way banking should be. We're back here at the Bearcats Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Kirsten Gardner flying down the court for the Bearcats. She got out of that press pretty quickly. Tatum Rusher looked like she was going to be wide open, and Kirsten Gardner, no, oh. no good. She almost tied the record right there. How much is the basketball gods don't want it to happen yet? Oh. And the route is getting involved now. This is the loudest we probably heard, probably heard them all day. Great defense right there by Tatum. Rusher stealing it away from Jenna Marshall. Rusher flying down the court. Give it to Kirsten. Oh. Kirsten, 4-3. No oh. good. Oh. You're going to hear groans every single time she shoots <laughs> until she makes the it. The whole arena knows what's about to happen. Well, maybe. Well, that's quite possible. As no good on that layup in and out. The toilet bowl for Allison Marshall. You hate to see it. Well, actually, we love to see it. Well... Uh, We're the home team broadcast. We can say stuff like that. I mean, uh, <laughs> I've, I've done that before, so I know that I know we're paying. I did it in a one-on-one. -on -one. I crossed the dude up, and I was laughing so hard that I missed the layup like that. <laughs> Never again. That was, in the, that, was, that was before, like, conditioning. That was Hatcher. Well defended, and that shot is going to be no good. A shot you don't necessarily have to take if it's not a great shot. You can wait and regroup. That's a three-pointer in and out. There's a can on these what baskets the right here. Jenna Marshall, no good on the three-pointer. Um, I'm not sure if anybody actually got the rebound until Hatcher did, so we'll just give the credit of a rebound. I don't think we'll give a steal at all. And it's going to be a foul called on the floor. It's, it's going to be called on number four, Emma Martin, for a push. Maddie Province will inbound for the Bearcats. 
Tatum Rusher, excuse me, Kirsten Gardner with the ball. She pulls up and knocks down the two. Honestly, at this point, who cares about the record? It'd be really cool to see, but Bearcats would love to come out here with the win. Record would be cool too, but you yeah, know. The win needs to come, the win needs to come first, but exactly. a record wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. It's a team sport as foul is gonna be called on Kaylee Hatcher. And it'll be Allison Marshall going to the line to shoot too. It looked to be a very bit, a very light foul, but again, I'm not the official. I'm wearing blue, not black and white. <laughs> I'm wearing my Adidas Amplified logo shirt that I got at Marshalls for like 10 bucks. <laughs> Allison Marshall knocks down the first. You yeah, see, we've we coordinated at the beginning on some of the outfits, but then we've never gone on camera again. Yeah. And so we've never had to coordinate in, in a while. I think the last time we actually, like, well, actually, that's not true. Because I remember, like, you went on camera for an interview after. Um, uh, it, after was that game. Way, it was the day before the showcase when uh, the big strive group. Yes, and. Ball's going to go out of bounds. It'll stay with the Bearcats. I thought that went off of. I think it went off of a foot yeah, real I close to Kirsten, but it was, I believe, a Gretna, a from Gretna my, foot. Yeah, from my skewed point of view, it looked like that went off of Kirsten. I couldn't quite tell right there as Gardner got the ball tipped, but she'll step out of bounds. I mean, it's kind of hard to see. We're going to stand up again. Yeah, <laughs> standing up is, a, you know, wouldn't it be absolutely amazing if you're calling these games from the court? Oh, absolutely. Just have like a second press box with like uh, Kevin Harlan and Reggie Miller, those guys. I mean, not not Kevin Harlan. Gosh, is it Kevin Harlan? Kevin um, Hart? I think he's, no. <laughs> Kevin Hart is Kevin Hart calling a basketball game would be <laughs> That'd amazing. That'd be hilarious. That'd be funny. He'd probably roast some dude for like I think it is shot. Kevin Harlan though. Yeah, Kevin Harlan and Reggie Miller. That's my favorite basketball duo right there. Used to be a Marv Alpert. And, Can't uh, go wrong with a, sha uh, with a Shaq halftime. Press uh, absolutely recap. Gardner, no good. That would have tied the record. See how many times we have to say that could have tied the record before she makes it. <laughs> we just gotta stop saying it. It'll happen. As that three pointer is good from Grace Huntwork. 38, 34. Oh. The Bearcats seeing the margin get slimmer and slimmer. Nolan. Carney is currently shooting three for 22 from beyond the arc, so as much as we want to see it, it might be a thing where we need to stop shooting from beyond the arc. I suppose so, especially with, especially with this margin that we currently have. It's a two-possession two game. And we're going to take a quick timeout. You're watching the Bearcat Sports Network brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Welcome back to the Bearcats Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Tatum Rusher inbounds the ball to Kirsten Gardner. Gardner, we've said it again, but she is one away from the three single season three point record, tying that record as Tatum Rusher with a nice move to work her way around the defender. That's the kind of shoot. That's that's the kind of uh, shooting we're going to need as a shot that they know they can make. Absolutely, just those are those are the shots that we need to see. As I believe it's going to be a shooting foul. She like threw that. Grace Hunt work will go to the line. To Either way, two. counted as a shooting foul. Tatum Rusher has three fouls. Hunt works first. Is 
Gets the friendly roll. Her shoes are cool. Yeah, her shoes are pretty cool. I'll, I'll give her that. I like that. <laughs> I'll give her that. Yeah, their shoes are pretty cool. But you know whose shoes are really cool? Maddie Province. Polka dot shoes. Yep. Emma Schweigart, Schweigart, 34 has pretty good ones too. I'll check those out later. Oh, the pink. The pink oh, ones over yeah. by Hatcher here. Dragons running a press right now, and there's going to be a foul called. I'm going to shoot one and one. That was going to be called on Brooke Rose. Carney looking to end a... Actually, no, they already did. Never mind. <laughs> At the break before, they were on a f uh, Grant was on a 5-0 run, but then we had the whole Euro step thing, and Rusher did what Rusher does yep. and ended that. And going to stop for some substitutions coming in for the Dragons. Checking in will be number 20, you know, it's number 15, I believe. Allison Marshall, they just checked in. Could be mistaken. Kirsten Gardner, no good on that attempt, and loose ball. Rebounded by, Pro by Province, and the ball goes. Province hit the deck. And that shot is up and in. Grace Huntworth, these Dragons are not going away. It's a two point ball game. Three well, minutes and 38 seconds remaining. What was a nine point lead in the at the start of the fourth? Rusher to Hatcher. Hatcher no good from three. And there's gonna be, almost thought there should be a foul right there. And the crowd is in agreement, oh it's in disagreement. It looked like she just pushed her. Yeah, she extended her arm, she not quite waiting to see what. She literally like pushed her. It's mayhem here in Carney, Nebraska. Well, when someone yells at the Rowdies, the Rowdies aren't going to take it. So that is what happened there. Zaboodle so will inbound for the Dragons. And there's going to be a foul called on Kennedy Gardner. So Jenna Marshall will go to the line to shoot two. And Carney's got to get themselves in the right positions there. That's only Kennedy's first foul. So Kennedy's just fine to make that foul. But Carney's got to get themselves in situations where they're in front of the defender rather than behind. And Marshall, no good on the first attempt. I mean, on a cold shoot, on a cold shooting day for the Bearcats, these free throws are crucial. She misses both of them. Madison Province gets the rebound. Kirsten Gardner will take the ball up for the Bearcats. She crosses the timeline, and here we go. Gretna switching to a man-to-man -man defense. I don't know when that happened, but I've noticed it now. So that's a. There's that for everybody. And there's going to be a foul called on Sydney Zabudo. No, there's going to be a foul called on no, Kirsten no Gardner. Foul. It just, no they're foul. They're calling a jump ball. Are you kidding me? The gym letting the officials hear it. And there's going to be a timeout call, I believe, by the Bearcats. There's a lot going on. With, for the boys in stripes, we're, we're going to take a quick timeout. You're watching the Bearcat Sports Network brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Welcome back to the Bearcats Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. The jump ball was in favor of the Bearcats, but it was a questionable jump ball to say the least. Kennedy Gardner is going to pass it over to Maddie Province. Province gets it into, over to Gardner. 
And Gretna starting a lot of these traps, trying to force extra possessions for them if they can. And it's going to be a reach-in foul. This one's going to be called an Allison Marshall. <laughs> and her fourth, she's got to be careful. I thought you said this one's going to be called Ann Allison, whatever. Like, never mind. Anyways. All right. Maddie Province will go to the line to shoot one of one. And Province, no good. Rebounded. Rebounded by Schweigert. Rowdy's making their presence felt. It's a crucial possession right here at this point in the game. Just under two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. And that's your pointer, no good. And the ball is loose. And it'll be Bearcat basketball. As it should. Carney lucky on that one. Yeah, you're seeing Hatcher and Skeen coming out, in and out on each possession pretty much, kind of keeping Hatcher off of, the, off of the defense and allowing Skeen to go there because Skeen has less fouls than, than Hatcher. Garner chucks it up. It's going to be picked up by Hatcher. Garner gets the ball. That'll be a foul called. Couldn't even hear the whistle. I, even I, know, the whistle. I, I was yeah. like, what the heck? I don't think they... It's like everybody just like slowed down. Was like, I saw the fist go up, and that was the only sign. And I, was like, and I was like, Kirsten, you need to, <laughs> you need to get across <laughs> the timeline now. Oh, my gosh, why are we moving so slow? I got a little nervous right there. And yeah, we need to make these free throws. Kennedy Gardner will go to the line. Knocks down one. She has a second. Oops. I added the point to the wrong team. You want us to lose or something? No. <laughs> Yeah, Carney's going to shoot two fouls, uh, two shots on each foul. Ooh, what's her tattoo? Number 24, I'm trying to figure out what that is. I don't know what it was. I saw it earlier. I don't know what it is. And no good from Kennedy Gardner in the second attempt. At least moves it up to a three-point lead for the Bearcats. Sabudal. He's going to pass it off. Brutal being guarded by Gardner. Province. And great, great defense, better offense right there. Sydney Reimer knocks down the layup. Province. He's gonna pass it off to Gardner. Gardner to Kirsten. Rusher drives in and puts it up and gets the friendly roll off the glass and in. Tatum Rusher has 14 points. That's a three-pointer and that is way long. Rebounded by Kirsten Gardner. Gardner is going to be fouled right there by Emily Schweigert. Shoot with a line to shoot one of one. Uh, she will get two shots now, actually. Oh, yes, we're in the double bonus. It's an amazing thing. So glad we have it. <laughs> Can't imagine what we'd do without it. I mean, basketball would be a very interesting sport if it wasn't. At least gives us two shots. And Gardner knocks down the first one. Nothing but net right there. It has been a long time since Carney has shot a three-pointer, and that's kind of showing that they've realized it's not exactly their night from beyond the arc. Garner cannot knock down the second, so it's a four-point game, two-possession game. Dragons, oh. Ooh. Jenna Marshall. Try to put a little sauce on that one. It'll go out of bounds. Sydney Zabrudel will inbound for the Dragons. And there's gonna be a timeout called. Fletcher very unhappy. He's you know, standing there yelling, holding up a tee. Didn't get anything for a long time. Gonna let the rest hear it. All right. Be a full timeout. 
Yeah, we're gonna take a full timeout. You're watching the Bearcat Sports Network brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Back here at the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. Hands up, wide, hands up, hands up. Yeah, there's, that's rebounds like that that Carney needs to get. And yeah, that three pointer is going to be long, no good. Grace Hunt work. And yeah, there's going to be a over, probably an over the back foul right there. It's going to be called on. It's going to be called on Kirsten Gardner. That's her second. And yeah, that's kind of showing Carney needs to get those offensive rebounds or else situations like this happen. Jenna Marshall will go to the line, shoot one of one. And knocks down the first. Dragons have fought very hard in the second half to make sure they stay in this ball game. 44-42. Kirsten Garner is on the run. She's gets Triple her way in the trap, and Hatcher somehow oh, gets out of there. And there's going to be a timeout called by Coach Fletcher. Oh, goodness we'll take me. that time. And uh, I think you know. I just think we, we should just stick around here. We'll stick. We'll keep it around. So we'll we'll head over to some stats stuff real quick. Carney three for twenty three from beyond the arc. Hasn't shot it since, and it hasn't shot it in a long time. Yeah, um, we, we have not seen many three-pointers. Yeah, no. but they are 17-43, so they've stayed about the same percentage-wise um, at 40%. They've got 14 team fouls. So they've got eight turnovers, which they have had two in the second half. 26 rebounds, 11 assists, four steals, and a block. Um, this quarter has so far been won by Gretna by five points. Um, Carney's won all but every quarter so far, but is currently losing in this one. As long as they can hold on, they'll be fine. Yeah, the Bearcats, like, seriously, if they if this shot maybe just a little bit better, like, this, it'd be a totally different ball game right now with the poor shooting and If they made half defense. of their threes that they've taken. Yeah, but, I mean, good credit to Gretna for playing some good defense, but if the Bearcats have been knocking down some of these open shots, man, it, it's a totally different story at this point in the ball game. Rusher. Drives in, puts it up, no good, but she'll go to the line to shoot two off the shooting foul. Foul is called to number 34, Emma Schweigart. Tatum will have two shots here. And Rusher knocks down the first. Bearcats out of timeouts, now Dragons with two. Carney would have loved if Kaylee had been able to take the ball up the floor with all that open space she had rather than holding it. Could have saved them a timeout potentially. Rusher knocks down two of two, those free throws might end up being crucial. 23 seconds remaining, it's gonna be stolen away by Tatum Rusher. Kirsten Garner's running down the floor and that is up and good and that all but should seal it. 13 seconds remaining. And a timeout's gonna be called by the Great and the Dragons. Clutch plays after clutch plays for the Bearcats. Pearson on fire. I think it's a full timeout, but we can keep it. No one will let you decide what we want to do. Uh, let's just keep it here. Yeah, so you can kind of hear the gym. It's, hopefully you can hear the gym. I'm trying to sound mix while I do everything, but it, is, uh, it has been 
a heck of a game. Kirsten may not be getting may not be getting that record today, but she but she is still she's got a uh, 12 points. Uh, second on the team in scoring behind Rush, who has 16 points. Uh, so she's got half of what her career high is. Um, this will put her 12 points away from reaching five. So she's at 488 points, career total points. So that'll hopefully set her up nicely at a shot of getting 500 career points uh, in, their, in the district championship if, uh, if they were to move on. Yeah, this is, man. This has been quite the ball game. <laughs> you know what? It's not about the records. It's all about the team winning. And Kirsten Garner, she's played on selfish basketball. She's had herself a good game. I mean, she may not be leading the team in scoring, which I don't believe that she is. And she isn't Ooh, quite. She's the second leading scorer, but she Kirsten has, been, has six assists, too, so she's finding the open person. Yeah, she, she's done a really good job. That's one of the things about Kirsten Garner. She, she can facilitate the offense so well, and she may not score the most points. Tatum Rusher does that, and that three-pointer is going to be short. Loose ball. Puts up and in. The Dragons make it a four-point game, but the clock runs out. The Bearcats have won the ball game. Carney will advance to the district championship and play the winner of Fremont and North Star on Tuesday, I believe. There's something special about this team when they do when they get things together and they play good basketball. And you know what, I think, I like our chances. I really like our chances. If we can get good ball moon, if we can figure out how to just play defenses, just figure out how to work, that, work our way around some, some of those good defenses that we've seen in Class A. We've had a tough schedule. We played the best of the best in Class A the whole year and I really think that we're battle tested and that the Bearcats could come away with that championship. And Mitchell, got any final thoughts about this game? You know, uh, it may not have been. We would have loved to see Kirsten get that record. We all would have. Um, but this, she's one away. So it's something great we can hopefully look to see in those coming games. But Carney's got to regroup, get a real good week of practice. If they play Fremont, who I think will win today against North Star. Probably. Then they've played them, clo they've played them closer and closer every single game they've played. They lost. They were real close. They lost it in the fourth quarter. In, the, in their last ring, but if they can play closer and closer, like I know they can, they got to get back at a good week of practice, and they need a they need a win, they need a win against Fremont to give them to give them a state berth. They are not high enough for a wild card, but a win against Fremont would give them that state berth. That'd be huge. Fremont has has been the best team in class in Class A for uh, for the whole season basically. Yeah. They, they've been killing it, and if you can get a win against a team like that, get yourself in the state playoffs. Man, that would be <laughs> – I kind of want to be there, honestly. We would we would love to see Carney get there. Kirsten, a, Kirsten Tatum, two very good players that uh, complement each other very well. To see them get even more games to play would be an incredible thing to see. Absolutely. This Bearcat team has so much potential. And taking down Fremont would just supercharge their way into the playoffs. In the playoffs, they could make some, make some noise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be signing off here from the Bearcat Sports Network, brought to you by Pinnacle Bank. I'm Nolan Dart, signing off for Mitchell Brandt, Tasha Russell, our advisor, Mr. Goff, Sarah Dalkey, Asher Salisbury, and we Claude will... Claudette. Yeah, I don't know and, if we And Claudette. She was on the floor doing our floor cam. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in no, you want to, to wave today's goodbye game. To the camera? Oh, hi. <laughs> we're going to say <laughs> goodbye to the camera. And we'll be right back here at 6 o'clock for another district game. We're going to have the Class class D2 districts going on district here at Kearney, championship. District Championship here at Kearney High. So stay tuned for that. And from the Bearcat Sports Network, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. Good night.